She couldn't account for the emptiness she felt here in the heart of the beast. Success, bright lights, noisy friends, music, something always happening. Happening all so fast, but something was lacking. She yearned for something solid, something that was always there, unchanged. The decision was made. All had been arranged. She was going home. Outside the window, the scenery changed quite suddenly. Where before all stood shoulder to shoulder, now all was quite isolated. The winter evening drawing in made it seem all the more desolate, cut off. She felt her first tingle of panic. She got off the train, deriding her foolish imagination. How absurd, feeling quite thrilled now and looking forward to the short walk from the station to her home through the woods. Ah, the woods, how exciting. She was already feeling that she was embarking on a small adventure. Standing at the mouth of the woods, looking down its long black throat, she took her first steps in and was slowly consumed. It was dark now, with the moon making brief appearances between the branches, serving as a tease, not a comfort. It would be fine if she could focus her sight to tunnel vision, but all to the side and all behind was alive. The next tingle of panic. And this made things worse. The path narrowed, the branches closed in, and the sound of a thousand flick knives echoed. The trees had their claws out. Not just a tingle of panic now. Run! She escaped, spat out as it were, out of breath. She stood outside her own front door. Then she was inside with the family. Disappointed? Well, yes. It wasn't the fanfare welcome she expected or needed. Oh, it was very warm and they were very eager to hear about all her tales, but she felt ill at ease. She imagined herself being suffocated. What with all the plans they were making for her to stay for not just a few days, but maybe a week or two or more, ignoring her protestations like she wasn't there, and all the while, watching her with those greedy, possessive eyes. When it was time for the good hearty meal, she was relieved. She was hungry. Mm-mm, her mother's cooking. The meat had always had a unique taste to it. She must ask her for the secret. Seated at the table opposite both her sister and her mother, she watched them. Heads down, they were so intent on eating. Such concentration. She herself took a few bites, but found, inexplicably, that she had lost her appetite. Every now and then, they would look up and catch her eyes, making her feel embarrassed, guilty. But she couldn't stop watching them. It was fascinatingly ugly, from fork to mouth, then back to plate, never ending. The meal was over. That night, the silence was unbearable. Her sleep disturbed by the door being opened. Or was she still asleep? Also confusing. Opening her eyes, she looked up to see a figure hovering at the foot of her bed. Was it her sister? All was still silent. Her fear stopped her from calling out, and the figure floated out. She was beside herself now. She flung the bedclothes off and ran down the stairs, turning on lights as she did so. Something stopped her in her tracks at the door to the front room. She heard the hushed bickerings of a tug of war. It's mine, it's mine, give it to me. She opened the door and there was her mother on all fours with her sister pulling at something raw and dripping red. They both looked up and caught her with their eyes, pinned her to the spot. They were coming closer and closer. Take me back, 
Take me back! Look to where you have arrived, not to where you have come from. <laughs>